Right guys, what are you saying? Welcome back to Carefree Lewis G. Welcome back to another match review for you guys today. In this video, we're going to talk about Tottenham versus Chelsea and how we have been absolutely Jose'd, man. Uh, before I start this video, as usual, before I start this video, if you haven't done so already, please like, subscribe, press the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever we release any new content on this channel. And bruv, oh, it's so... It's annoying with the way that we've come out, but I knew it. I knew in the back of my head that Jose Mourinho was going to pull a Jose Mourinho. And what happened? We've been well and truly Jose. I feel really bad for Mason Mount first off because whoever's going to miss the penalty is going to be made to look bad. I do want to ask where Timo Werner was because he is one of the best penalty takers on our team. I've heard little rumours that he might have been injured at full time. I'm not sure, but if he wasn't injured, I don't know why he wasn't one of the top... One of the top five players to play. But we're going to break down the game in this video. It's annoying because it is a London derby. And the worst part is I think Spurs cared about this game less than we did. And that's really saying something. Because Spurs needed this win against us. But they have tougher fixtures to look forward to. The uh, match against Mac uh, Maccabee Tel Aviv, I think. And the game against Manchester United on Sunday. They didn't care too much about this match and it showed in the way they set up. It was five at the back. There wasn't even a there wasn't even a striker up front and they were just playing to minimize damage. Our lineup looked pretty solid to be fair. Mendy in goal, Azpilicueta at right back, Zuma, Tomori and Chilwell at left back. Jorginho Kovacic in midfield, Hudson Doy and Mount and Werner and Giroud. Solid lineup and we really should have done better in this in the case of 90 minutes, but I said because of the way Jose was going to play, they were they were going to sit everybody behind the bus. They were going to put everyone behind. They were going to put 11 men. They were going to put a double decker bus. They were going to put whatever they could to try and stop us. And they did. They stifled a lot of our attacks and they forced us to just spend most of the first half just spraying the ball side to side, left to right. And it was frustrating and the number one thing that we did need going into first uh, going into first half was an early goal and we got that what's his name Regulon got absolutely spun on his ass as per, what was it it was in the build up and Hudson Odoi dashed into the side lays off to Aspel Equator gets slid all the way back to Sevilla and then he lays off the assist for Timo Werner it's 1-0 and looks like the perfect start for us but then at that point, Spurs, they still haven't really come out too far forward. They're still trying to play the game slowly. They know it's a long game. And with us, our midfield, the Jorginho and Kovacic pivot was really good at stopping them from starting counter-attacks. But there was just not much going forward. And we, we were just spending a lot of time just passing the ball sideways and backwards. I didn't want to complain about it too much because in the circumstances of it, I understand why. Tottenham aren't trying to go forward. They're trying to protect their goal. The, the main thing they were trying to do is minimise the damage on their goal. Minimise the amount of attacks that they had. They were trying to play defensive and time waste. I've got nothing against it before any of you guys sit here and say that I'm trying to be salty. Because I completely get the circumstances. Spurs fixture is mad. They've got another two, ga two three games left for this week. I think they've had about nine games since the season started two weeks ago. Their team is stretched. But even for that, over the case of 90 minutes, they should have tired out. But if anything, they came on a little bit more and we were the ones that tired out. The substitutions didn't help us out as well. And I will say Mason Mount should have been subbed off. I'm not going to discredit him for the penalty miss or anything because that really isn't his fault it was unlucky at the post but he was fading out towards the end towards the end of the second half and Lampard still didn't take him off and I really think he should have done that he went into half time 1-0 and at that point it looks comfortable Spurs haven't really threatened us too much going forward they've had two chances but Kurt Zoom has been all over that he had an amazing performance Fikayo Tomori as well they both had great performances as centre-back I do want to say that with a little bit of an asterisk because we were playing a team that didn't really want to attack for about 70 minutes of the game. So it was easy for them to look good, but they did look good. Anytime they went forward, Zuma's recovery tackles were amazing. Their strength was great and they just bodied Lamella and what's his name, Bergwijn off the ball every single chance that they got. Second half came in and Spurs started coming a little bit more into the game. We do still look like we're managing it very well. Mendy has a brilliant save in the second half. 
And bar that, the game's just flowing. I'll be real, it's it's still it's still slow. Spurs are still playing on the defensive. We're still struggling to break them down. I think the only players that really did well on the attack were Hudson Odoi and Timo Werner. Even in the case of Hudson Odoi, he does need a bit of consistency, and he did miss a couple chances as well. But I think both of them were our best players going forward. Olivier Giroud. It just didn't really seem like the game for him. He kept trying to get the ball down to tap onto somebody else, but there just wasn't enough space for him in the midfield. Every time there was a second ball that he was trying to lay off, there was two Spurs players running in for it, and he was trying to link up with other players, so it just really wasn't the game for him. Not Again, not to discredit Giroud, I don't think he had a bad performance. The game just didn't suit him, and he should have been subbed off a lot earlier than he was. Uh, substitutions start to come in. Ben Chilwell, who had a pretty good performance against Spurs, comes off for Emerson, which I think is just because we're still trying to ease him back into full match fitness. And then Emerson costs us the first goal because he's lazy on the comeback again. I'm, I'm so sick of both of these left backs, man. They both constantly make mistakes. And it's always individual errors that cost us. Every single time it's an individual error that lets us down. The West Brom game, we weren't terrible. Three bad mistakes cost us in the opening first half an hour of the game. Liverpool, we weren't bad. Three individual, uh, uh, three individual errors cost us in that game as well. Even the Brighton one, individual error cost us one in that match as well. And it's what keeps letting us down. Emerson was too slow in the comeback. Lamella scored, probably should have been off with the amount of fouls that he had, but Lamella should have been off in about three or four Chelsea games. He never gets sent off, so it really just is what it is. Then at that point, we end up bringing more subs in. Kante and Tammy Abraham come on. Kante had an amazing performance off the bench and really could have got a couple more goals for us as well. Tammy Abraham came on and I think his link-up was a little bit better. He was a little bit more agile and flexible and able to get round defenders. But at 1-1, the game was so dead and, at, and Spurs, all they were really trying to do was just hold it to penalties. I thought it was going to extra time, but time I was going to penalties. We had... A couple decent chances. I think there was a pass that Mason Mount could have laid off a bit earlier, but he just looked really tired at that point. And we really should have brought him off. We should have. And maybe I think Kai Havertz could have come on and probably taken a penalty. I think Ross Barkley probably has a decent record there as well. It was annoying. We go into penalties, and penalties is just whoever misses it. It's about a game of t it's about a game of nerves. And really and truly, everyone went the same way on penalties. I don't know if you guys know if you guys noticed it. Everyone went on the left hand side. I don't know if Mendy got done how many times, but maybe penalties penalty saving hasn't been his strongest suit yet. But I don't really know what to tell you too much about the penalties. It went down to Mason Mount, and his was the unlucky one that missed, and it was match point, and that's why we got knocked out. It's jarring, it's annoying, but we really just have to take this one on the chin and move on. I'm going to move on to the player ratings pretty quickly. Uh, Mendy had a pretty good game. Penalty shootout was disappointing not to see him at least go the right way for one or two of them, but... It just is what it is. I'll give him a 6. I think it was a very promising performance from him. As for Equator, I thought he was great down that right-hand side. Um, yeah, I'll probably give him another 6 as well. Zuma, impeccable at the back. I pro I think I'd give him an 8. He was excellent all over that side. There was not a lot to deal with in the first half, but every time there was something, he swept up perfectly. Tomori as well, I'm going to lower it to a 7 because I think Zuma was just that bit better, but they both had excellent performances. Ben Chilwell as well, I thought, did really well handling the one-on-ones down that left-hand side. Uh, he, he was in a lot of good positions going forward as well, but Jorginho's passes had a lot of curve to him. It just meant he had to come back a little bit too much, but I thought he had a good performance. I'll give him a 6. Jorginho, 5. I think all he really had to do was just keep the play going round and set the tempo. But there wasn't really much bite going forward that I saw, so I'm going to give him a 5. Kovacic as well, 5. There wasn't really much going forward, but he did well recycling the ball. And in transitions, they did good to stop Spurs counter-attacking. hudson Doy, brilliant from him. Unlucky with a couple chances towards the end of the game, but I thought he had a very promising performance. I'm going to give him a 7. Mason Mount, 6. 6. I, I feel bad for the penalty miss, so I'm not going to take that too much into account. Uh, nah, 5. I think he petered off a lot more towards the second half. It was, yeah, he really should have come off a lot more earlier. I think that's what lowers his rating, so I'll give him a five. Timo Werner, great to get off the mark against Spurs. Struggled a lot with the lack of space. It's something that he does need to get a bit more used to. But I think it was a much more promising performance, so I'm going to give him a six. Olivier Drude, I'm going to give a four. It's not his fault he had a bad performance. It really isn't. It, the game just didn't suit his style of play. 
Uh, who else? What are the subs? Kante, I'm going to give a 7. He had a great performance. Actually, no, I'll give him a 6, just off the bench, yeah. Tammy Abraham as well, probably a 5. Didn't really have too much impact on the game. And Emerson. Emerson, I'm going to give a 3. Because it was his result that led to the equaliser. And that's basically what cost us the game. But guys, this is the end of the match review slash player ratings. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Up the Chelsea.